Dylan Stein, Jack Edward, oh, Stephen Kelly putting the move in on. And up with Matthew Lachlan. Oh, takes the move there. Yeah. 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 that position. And is it Glenn McCormick on the Husqvarna? This review of the National Irish Championship is brought to you by BeforeMX.com, the classified ads website for everything off road. So the practicing is just complete here in Robinson's for the uh, expert classes in A and B, MX1 and MX2. And in the gate behind me, the MX2 class is getting prepared for their first race of the day. But it was James Mackerel from Glenn McCormick and Jake Sheridan rounding out the top three and qualifying. And only 0.8 of a second separating the three of them. So it's interesting to see Glenn McCormick coming over here for his first round of the uh, National Irish Championship that he's taken part in, racing most of the season over in the UK. And uh, we'll see what happens in the first race here today, how close it'll be, and who comes out on top at the end of race one. The expert MX2 riders are lined up to the gate then for their first race of the day, whereas James Doyle is taking the very inside gate beside Josh McCorkle. And Josh was qualifying well inside the top 10 here today for his first appearance at the National Irish Championship. Following on from them then, it's David Galvin beside Connor Mullen. Uh, Jack Galvin then is beside Glenn McCormack. And uh, then we have James Mackerel beside Jake Sheridan. No Jordan Kyo on the line here today. Um, I don't know why he's not here, but uh, definitely going to lose out on his points for this round anyway. It's unfortunate. So we'll see what way the day plans out and what way the championship takes off. We have the green flag up now for the first race of the day. So the riders are instructed to start their engines and the gate drop will be short. The 15 second board is up. It turns to five, the revs are up. And the gate is down very quickly on the start here. And who gets to go jump? It looks like Jake Sheridan. Yeah, Jake Sheridan leading uh, Glenn McCormick there. Coming out of the first turn, we got Dylan Steins as well in the top five on. James Doyle left up against the bank. You see Jake Sheridan pulling away now at the front. So it's Jake Sheridan now to lead then early on ahead of uh, Glenn McCormack. You see James Mackerel anywhere to be seen in the back of the pack. There he is there, Robbie running out around the top ten. He's got a bit of work to do. So it's Jake Sheridan and Glenn McCormack then out with the early lead. These two riders breaking away from the track pretty early here now after getting a good start. A bit further back then we have David Robson, Dylan Steins and James Mackerel. And it's a Jake Sheridan, Glenn McCormack show here earlier on as the two separate themselves from the rest of the field. We see can Jake Sheridan keep ahead of Glenn for the rest of the race. Robson then sitting in about fifth position and he's just ahead of Dylan Steins. And I don't see James Mackerel now. I know he was carrying an injury coming into this race after his last round in Ling in the Emmick Nationals and uh, suffering quite a bad burn and I can't see him uh, further back in the pack here now again. He seems to be rounding up the back so a bit of a disaster here to start in race one for James Mackerel. Glenn McCormack has gotten around Jake Sheridan here around the fourth lap. And we see can Jake Sheridan mount an attack back now and try to take back that first position. But this is where the action is now from uh, fourth on. And you see Jack Galvin separating himself from the follow on pack here. But as you can see, we've got David Robson in there, Dylan Stein, Jack Galvin, oh, Stephen Kelly putting a move in on David Galvin there. And Jay is back just following on. And it's Jack Galvin holding his own here then for fourth position. But we've got David Robson. Oh, James Mackerel doing that huge tabletop to single there. So James Mackerel making quick work of that pack as he makes his way through. He has, still has a lot of work to do to try and catch up on Jack Galvin for fourth. But he's made his way to the head of that group now. As they charge back. The, oh! Oh my God, Stephen Kelly putting... David Robson into the bank and I think he might have caught his wrist there on the landing. Oh, that's horrible to see for David Robson. We'll hope he'll be okay, but that tight circuit coming into its own here now, you know. For something that we commented on in the preview that it gets narrow here, it gets tight and this is the result of it here now. We really hope David Robson will be okay. It's Jack Galvin in fourth then now and James Mackerel closing in on him. David Robson seems to be back on the motorcycle. 
as they come around here to the step down that, that Liam Robson there with the injury. Yeah, David Robson back on the bike, delighted to see that now and that he's back going again. Here comes Stephen Kelly, the, the perpetrator of the assault and getting it all wrong in behind him. No doubt that will have got to him a bit in a mental, in a, in a mental way. Now with the front end is still Glenn McCormick leading ahead of Jake Sheridan. And uh, a very oddly shaped motorcycle for Conor Mullen there as he lost the front number plate. James Doyle having all sorts of trouble in this first race of the day after a poor start. And here's a battle on now for third position. I think it's James Mackerel has caught up with Matthew Lachlan. Oh, takes a move there. Jumps clean past him from the tabletop to single to take third position. So that's a fantastic recovery for James Mackerel after his poor start. Back up the third. So it's Len McCormick maintaining that lead now. He's got Jake Sheridan by a bit. And uh, just kind of cruising here now at the moment. You see him carrying that speed around the corner so he can make that big uh, tabletop to single at the top of the hill. Jake Sheridan then as you can see is a few seconds back now in second position. And you can see here now we have James Macro coming along in third, but it's Jack Galvin managing to hang on to the coattails here. Uh, the gap has kind of been the same now for the last few laps, so we see if Jack can do anything before the end of the race, but ah, uh, getting caught up in backpackers here, sure he take a bit more time out of uh, Jack. And then we've got Matthew Lachlan, Stephen Kelly following on, I think that's for fifth and sixth. See a race leader, leader here, Glenn McCormick now, just railing those outsides, keeping the momentum up so he can keep his speed as he heads towards that big uphill step up now. Probably all the power that 250 has to make sure he gets to the top of it, he still comes a bit short. At the end of the first MX2 expert race then, it was Glenn McCormick on his unique fit out Husqvarna who danced his way around the circuit here in Robinson's to take a convincing win. After sitting beside Jake Sheridan for the opening laps, he made his move and kept it ahead of the young Dubliner. We see the number 122 championship leader with that red play coming across the line now. So we see can Jake find any speed between this and the next race to catch back up to the back of Glenn McCormick and put in a race winning performance. There was a bit of a gap then to uh, third position with Shubby James Mackerel who's just crested the uphill, t uh, uphill step up there now uh, coming down to round out the top three. Right, so we're catching up here with David Robson. Uh, David, of course, you had that collision with Stephen Kelly in the first MX2 race of the day, but you're good to see you're in OK form now. How, how are you feeling? Uh, feeling not too bad at the moment, uh, just after taking some heavy painkillers, so hopefully we'll just take a rest and uh, get packed up and maybe head to the hospital. Yeah, yeah, so hopefully nothing's broken on you or anything that way, but do you know much about the incident? How did it happen for you? What was it from your perspective? Uh, I was just coming over the jump and uh, I just seen the wheel and I just sort of knew there's nothing we could do. We were both in that air and we just just came down hard and then just went into the bank. Yeah, yeah, and we're having a chat there a moment ago that this track kind of lends itself to that riding. There's a lot of commitment needed and it comes into the into the one line together. So do you think that that's something that maybe could be improved? Uh, yeah, just sort of, a lot of the jumps are a bit blind. So I think um, just whenever you're carrying that much speed, maybe just if the, the jumps are a bit sort of straighter. Yeah, and straighten it out yeah. a bit, yeah. Yeah, so you're having a good championship so far. So this is a, a bit of a bummer now today. It's, it's not great for him at all, but hopefully you haven't broken anything. So um, how did you feel about your championship overall until today? Uh, we sort of had a bit of a slow start to the championship. Uh, we had a decent run down in front of Mount, but um, just with different settings on the bike, we were sort of just struggling to get set up and um, with suspension and stuff. But we sort of, I was working with Graham Ross and uh, PLR suspension, Cl uh, Clarence Bell, uh, through the week there. So we've got the bike sitting really well and had a good, pretty good start to the day today. And um, I f sort of felt like I was a bit more riding like myself. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, no, when no, I look back, I could ho hopefully continue that. Yeah, no, you look good there at the start of that race. And I mean, it was an awful fright for me commentating to see the accident that you had and I thought I thought the worst there for a while but luckily you, you managed to ride the bike back in home again and I suppose we just hope that you're, you're feeling okay and you'll be ready for the next round again but um, thanks very much for speaking with us. Alright thanks very much and thanks to all my sponsors uh, GoMX, Walk KTM, um, PLR, Graham, Mom and Dad and everybody else. 
Yeah, absolutely. And we can try to throw some, tr some more up on the screen after this. But thanks very much for ta talking to us, David. All right. Thanks very much. And a big thanks to all those supporting David Robson in this 2019 season. And we're getting geared up here now for the second MX2 race of the day. And of course, it was Glenn McCormack who took the first race win fairly convincingly from Jake Sheridan. But uh, David Robson, as you saw in the interview, out of this race now with an injured wrist and shoulder. Uh, it's also interesting to see if James Mackerel has lined up here. I, I think he has lined up in the gate and uh, haven't seen him in between the races. He's really, really struggling with that burn injury that he has on his side. And as you know yourself, you know, a mixture of sand getting into that wound is it's really not going to be easy for uh, young Mackerel here. But we'll see what he can do. Strong performances so far today. So we'll start off then with the second MX2 race of the day here from Robinson's MX for round three of the National Irish Motocross Championship. <laughs> And the 15 second board is up for the start of the second MX2 race. The revs are up. It's been turned to five. The gate is down very quickly again. We see who gets the jump here. Looks like Glenn McCormick. It's trying to head out, edge out Jake Sheridan there. Yeah, he just does on the Husqvarna. So Glenn McCormick out with the early lead here. Glenn McCormick going absolutely huge over that table top, the single ahead of uh, Jake Sheridan. And Jack Galvin is putting in a really strong performance today ahead of Stephen Kelly, David Galvin, James Mackerel now just edging his way into sixth position. I think that's Aaron Gardner there in seventh. Oh no, and it's uh, Glenn McCormick has made a huge mistake down the bottom of the hill. He came off the back of the bike, on the power, totally lost control of his machine and handed over the lead to Jake Sheridan. We can see him uh, coming back into the pack here now, maybe about 12th position. But a terrible mistake there for Glenn McCormick. And it's Jake Sheridan then out front, edging it out over Jack Galvin and James Mackerel just putting a move around Galvin there now on the outside. And James Mackerel, credit to this young man, has a head down here with that injury. Chasing hard now, trying to make up the time on Jake Sheridan. And so is Jake Sheridan now, just edging out James Mackerel. And uh, all these MX2 riders opting not to do that downhill double. And Stephen Kelly in third, but looks like Jack Galvin trying to make a move in on him. We we'll keep in with it here to see what happens. So Jack Galvin having a look at Stephen Kelly here. Stephen obviously able to mentally recover after that incident he had with David Robson in the first race. And James Mackerel railing that outside berm now at the bottom of the hill as he's trying to make up ground on Jake Sheridan. And uh, James Mackerel has made his way up to the back of Jake Sheridan now here on about lap three or four. And he's followed on then by Stephen Kelly who's managed to make his way ahead of Jack Galvin. And Glenn McCormick with a great recovery up to P5 here now. And James Mackerel has just made the move on Jake Sheridan over that downhill double. We see now, does he keep the lead? And he does ahead of Jake Sheridan. Followed on behind him then is Stephen Kelly and he's going to be coming under pressure from Glenn McCormick who's made his way up into fourth after that off-track excursion. You see him, James Mackerel now just ahead of Jake Sheridan here. And uh, Glenn McCormick doing that huge tabletop to single. And it's some very consistent riding from Jake Sheridan this season. He's in a second position here now. And that's the reason why he has the red plate. It's smooth and consistent riding for the young Dubliner. Not making too many mistakes. Holding his own there in that second position. But Glenn McCormick now trying to make his way back towards the lead. And it's a tougher day for Connor Mullen here today as well. He's hovering in around about the top 10. And he had some uh, open bike surgery going on before the start of the first race. So we'll see if he can pick up the pace here a bit and uh, get himself towards that front position. So we've got James Mackerel continuing his lead here ahead of uh, Jake Sheridan. And Glenn Cormack approaching then shortly after. Glenn Cormack still uh, doing that big tabletop to single. And that step down afterwards. James Doyle having a tougher day here today as well after having a bike issue in the first race where his uh, gear shifter went through to the other side of the case and caused him to have an oil leak and of course you can imagine what I was trying to ride with that in your head and here we go Jake Sheridan is just in front of Glenn McCormick here so you see what happens throughout the slap if they can close it up 
Mitchell is on here for second position as Glenn McCormick cleared the tabletop over the single to pull right up alongside Jake Sheridan as they crest the top of the hill, the far side of the valley from here now. Glenn McCormick hard the brakes up the inside of Jake Sheridan. Sheridan looking to come back around the outside. I don't think he has that in form. We'll follow along here now to see can Sheridan mount an attack back on McCormick. But the track getting very rough here now, so hard to keep the speed up. So after following Sheridan for a couple of laps, it looks like McCormick has got the job done pretty quickly and uh, has pulled a little bit of a gap on Jake Sheridan. And it's now or never as we're coming into the last lap. And as you can see, Jake Sheridan has pulled right up to the back of Glenn McCormick here. So you see, can he get any move made before the end of this lap? One more lap to do it. You see, if McCormick does the big table, the single. He does, and Sheridan doesn't, and McCormick stretches out. And it looks like that's giving McCormick just the break he needs to pull out that extra little bit he needs to stay in front of Sheridan until the end of the lap. So it was a strong, determined ride then from your race leader here, James Mackerel, to take the win, carrying along with that injury. McCormick made the mistake earlier on, and Mackerel did what he could with it and as you can see he's holding aside here now really really struggling today but uh, takes that second race win ahead of Je Glenn McCormack and Jake Sheridan We're catching up here with Connor Mullen after the second MX2 race today. Connor, not going great for you today. You had some open bike surgery going on there, swapping forks and shocks onto a different model. How's it going so far? Uh, yeah, well, uh, we had a few problems there in practice in the first race with the bike. You know, it was a few wee, few wee problems. We'll have that sorted now, so hopefully this last race should be okay. We'll give it, a, give it a good go. Yeah, I was chatting to you just before here, and you're saying it's a brand new bike for today, so trying to get the feel back into it again and, and get used to a different model. Uh, yeah, well, that wasn't the plan today, but, you know, one thing led to another, and we had to ride that new bike, so, no, it just takes a while to get, you know, everything better and get used to it, but we're, we're doing okay, we're doing alright. And you're hovering around the top ten today, so is there any part of the track you think you can make up a little bit of time, or the track condition's a bit tough out there, short lap as well? Yeah, it's short lap, you know, it's... It's tough because the track's getting rougher, you know, every lap you come around it's different, so there's nowhere in particular really, I just need to, you know, get the finger out pretty much yeah. the way around. Yeah, it's the kind of track that leads itself to a bit of momentum, so if you can keep that swing in the turns and down the hills, you'll, you'll find maybe a little yeah. bit of speed that you need, but uh, thanks very much for having a chat with us today, and best of luck for the rest of the day. That's great, thank you, you know, thanks very much. And a big thanks then to all those supporting Connor Mullen in his racing efforts this 2019 season. Catching up here with MX2 Championship leader Jake Sheridan. Jake, a consistent start to the season, giving you that red plate, and a consistent start to today as well. How are you feeling about everything? Yeah, no, yeah, I'm feeling okay. Um, I just need to kind of get me uh, me groove on now and try get another couple of points off macro and stuff like that, so I can keep in the lead and stuff. So yeah, no, I'm looking forward to the last week. So hopefully I can get it done. So yeah, you have some added competition today here from Glenn McCormick showing up for the first uh, first time in a National Irish Championship. How has it been battling with Glenn, especially in that last one? Yeah, it was great. Uh, it's nice to have like be battling with Glenn and stuff. He's a real good rider and an experienced rider as well. So yeah, no, it was nice to have having a bit of a dice with him and stuff like that. Now you know it's it's good. To, I'm actually learning lots as well, racing with that and like you know battling with him and stuff. So yeah, no, it was nice. So you're over in the MX Nationals last weekend and racing the pro class as opposed to the MX Sports or uh, MX Export. So uh, some really stiff competition over there. How did you find last weekend at Link? Uh, I struggled a bit, um, but yeah, again, it's just you know it's it's great experience. So um, yeah, I'm just trying to just get a bit quicker every weekend and just hopefully get stronger and you know hopefully the rules will come in the end. So that's the main thing. So and you just mentioned to me there as well at FXR after coming on board to sponsor you some gear today. So would you like to say some thanks to them? Yeah, no, big thanks to them and um, to to. The, MTM a company as well so it was great to, to have them sponsor me with gear and stuff so yeah no thanks I really appreciate it yeah it's great to see the support for the riders like yourself so you're taking on the National Irish Championship well look we wish you the very best of luck for the rest of today Jake and hopefully you can put in that number one spot yeah. by the end of race three thank you cheers and a big thanks to all those supporting Jake Sheridan in this 2019 season we're catching up here with James Doyle at round three, and James, not the best of a start today. You had a bike issue in the first one. Would you like to let us know what was going on? Um, 
Yeah, so in practice my gear lever broke off and it actually damaged the casing on the inside and oil was leaking everywhere so we were stressed to get that ready for the first one. We managed to get it done but it was tough enough now. Yeah, that really doesn't help and on top of that then a uh, poor start in the first race there leaving it over on the bank in the very first corner so you're on the back foot from, from the get go. Yeah, uh, one road rider went down in front of me and then I went into him and went down and sure, you know what I mean, that's what you get for getting a bad jump though. Yeah. And then just basically rode around in that race, arm pump, two laps in, then there's like 20 more laps to go, it was tough going now. Yeah, it was tough going but it's alright. Well there's one more to pick it all around now, so what are you going to do in race 3 to, to pick up this pace and go home with a smile on your face? Finish it and uh, <laughs> no, we're going to try to get a good start for once today and then just see how long I can last, you know, my arms, uh, hopefully we'll get five laps out of this time after loosening up a little bit, you know, during the day as it goes on. So, you know, trying is to just get today over with and then go to the next round, wherever it is, I don't know where it is, but, um, and try to come out swinging there again like we did in Tandragee, so, you know, just kind of write today off and come out next weekend or whenever it is just do the best yeah. well it's definitely a war not a battle but uh, on the start I see you lining up on the very inside for the first couple of races would it be maybe a bit of a sneaky idea to line up beside the guy kicking the pedal so you get the gate drop uh, I don't know if I'd be able to get in there like I have a terrible gate pick qualified 16 so it's basically the first it's either on the very inside or the very outside and I don't want to be on the very outside because I think that's just recipe for a domino effect people coming across so I'm just doing my own thing and just, you know, just, yeah, do the same thing again and try to get a better jump this time, you know, yeah. so I'm not last. <laughs> well, you're making the best of your situation today, bike issues, poor qualifying, arm pump, geez, there's not much more could go wrong in here today, but look, we'll turn it all around now on race three and get a good result. Yeah, we'll try to stay injury free anyway, that's the main thing right now, just get survive the last one, get through it. We'll do that's another 20 laps. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect, James, thanks very much. Cheers. And a big thanks to Doyle Harvesting Limited then in helping James Doyle get to all the races in this 2019 season. Catching up here with Stephen or Hal Kelly, uh, number 52. So uh, Stephen, you finished up in fourth position in the MX2 race. How are you feeling so far about your day? Not too bad. Uh, better start there in the second one. Um, struggling with arm pump seems to be everyone is struggling with arm pump. The, the bumps in the track, uh, it's not really flowing. Uh, a lot of hard bangs. Uh, see how the next one goes. Yeah, ideal, and he had a bit of a coming together then with David Robson in the first one. Would you like to just give your perspective on it, how all that happened? Uh, kind of a racing incident, two lines came into one. Uh, no one's fault really, Just he just came out worse than I did. Yeah, the track is kind of lending itself to that, isn't it? It's quite one line when you have to commit to the jumps, it all comes together. Yeah, when you, it's, there could be two corners in the, or two lines in the corner and a lot of them seem to be coming together, yeah, just to avoid the bumps, I think that's more, that's why it's happening. And how are you feeling about your championship overall so far? So it's been kind of strong performances in Vernon Mountain and Tandra Gee as well. Uh, up and down, need to get more, a bit more consistent now. Yeah. A, bit more, a few more days like today and we're going well. Yeah, absolutely. And where would you like to be now come the end of race three? Where would you like to see yourself? Uh, in the championship. Well, just for the race three, I suppose. Uh, have a similar race to go up to the top five again. Go up to the top five yeah. again, yeah, absolutely. Well, perfect. Thanks very much for talking to us, Stephen. Cheers, thank you. And a big thanks to Athai Trailers and Engineering for their support of Stephen Kelly this 2019 season. And we're into the third and final MX2 race of the day and I think it's uh, Glenn McCormick and James Mackerel tied at the moment for first position with a first and second each from the first two races but uh, don't quote me on that. See James Doyle uh, doing some warming up there opting for the inside gate pick again in this final race. And we'll see if the Galvins can pick it up as well here in this final one. They've been just out of touch and distance, although uh, Jack Galvin putting in a strong performance in the first one. So we'll see how it rounds out now for the MX2 race. And uh, round three, the National Irish Motocross Championship from Robinson's Motocross. The green flag has been raised and the riders have been ordered to start their engines. And we'll see now the 15 second board go up. Uh, 15 second board is up now, we'll wait for it to turn to five. Turn to five, the revs are open, heads are down, and the gate drops. Looks like Jake Sheridan with a good start here again. And he is, he's just Jack Galvin in behind him. That's uh, what we commented on before, seeking his second position. And is it Glenn McCormick on the Husqvarna there up the inside of Jack Galvin? We have to wait and see. And I think it is, it's Jake Sheridan followed by uh, Glenn McCormick. 
Jack Galvin, Stephen Kelly, James Backle there in fifth with David Galvin up the inside. So we'll see what happens with these two as the race progresses, but as you can see the track very rough now in this Tour of MX2 race today. Stephen Kelly with a bit of a mistake there trying to keep ahead of David Galvin. Glenn McCormick running the outside, carrying the speed on that tabletop, trying to catch up with Jake Sheridan here. And that's very rough on that landing there now as we see uh, Jack Galvin and James Mackerel up to fourth. Oh, Hal Kelly uh, getting nearly a bit of an endo there on the landing. And it's Jake Sheridan and Glenn McCormick. Glenn McCormick coming around the outside. Jumps clean past Jake Sheridan there as he gets that step down, but Jake Sheridan hard in the power comes back around the outside of Glenn McCormick. Glenn McCormick back up the inside again, filling Jake Sheridan's face at roost. And Glenn McCormick now it is in the lead position ahead of Jake Sheridan. Coming on behind then, then we have James Mackerel has made his way into third ahead of Jack Galvin. We see can he catch up with the lead duo here now. Uh, Mackerel was on the corner past the start straight where he managed to lean his way around the outside of Jack Galvin, take the position from him. And Mackerel railing that outside here, but uh, it looks like Jake Sheridan's coming back into the picture. <laughs> Trying to get up the inside of Glenn McCormick, which I think he does on the inside of that turn there. There's a yellow flag out. Play race has been red flagged. The race has been red flagged just as they're getting going here. So uh, I'm not sure where the incident is, but the riders have been called back for a restart. So we get to go all through it again. Now we're ready now for the restart of the MX2 race here. The 15 second board is up and it'll be turned to five. And you see James Mackerel is lined up on the very inside, the most inside rider. And the gate is down. Jake Sheridan looks like with a good start again. Just ahead of uh, Glenn McCormick. Yeah, so it's Jake Sheridan ahead of Glenn McCormick. And we have a rider down off the start. Uh, Glenn McCormick now has gotten past Jake Sheridan in the early part of the lap. We'll see them here now going over this table top to single. Absolutely skying the bike out there over that. And uh, as we watch, Jake Sheridan has taken a lead. Glenn McCormick must have dropped it. Glenn McCormick has dropped it after that table after single. It's quite rough out the back of the track. So it's Jake Sheridan now out with the lead here in this third race. And he's just ahead of Jack Galvin, followed by James Mackerel. And we follow these two now. Oh, James Mackerel, Spike backfiring as he's making his way around Jack Galvin there to get the move made. Uh, so it's Jack Galvin in third there, and I think it's Aaron Gardner in fourth, I'm not sure. And a great start for Conor Mullen. And it's Jake Sheridan here in first position, followed by James Mackerel, Jack Galvin. And a really strong start here for Conor Mullen in this one, where he sits fifth at the moment. And I have a feeling it's going to be the Jake Sheridan, James Mackerel show here as James Mackerel doubles his way down that hill. They put in a bit of a gap now between Jack Galvin who sits in a lonesome third, but uh, from the tenacity in James Mackerel's riding here in this third one, I don't think he's going to want to settle for second. James Mackerel railing around the outside and pulling right up on Jake Sheridan as he comes by. Got the pair charging up this uphill now. Can James Mackerel get the move made? They're right beside each other. Uh, I think Jake Sheridan's going to hold on to it here now. Got James Mackerel and Jake Sheridan right up on each other at the far end of the circuit. James Mackerel pushing for the inside. He takes the spot from Jake Sheridan there. Just pushed up the inside of Sheridan. And look who it is paired up again here in this one. We've got uh, David Galvin from Dylan Steins. I think that's for fifth position there. And Connor Mullen dropped back just a couple of positions there now, but definitely the start he was looking for here in the third one. And a really impressive ride here from the young Corkman, Jack Galvin, who is just ahead of Glenn McCormick now, has made his way back into four. And uh, Glenn keeping an eye on where the lead pair are at, but it'll be a tough ask for him to catch up with those guys. But we've got a real ding dong here the last few laps between these two. It's David Galvin from Dylan Steins. Dylan Steins looking for where he can make that move on Galvin as well, but you know, this rough circuit coming to catch him there, lost a bit of time. And Dylan Steins has made his way past David Galvin now to take what I think is a seven position. And James Mackerel seems to have found something a little bit extra to open the gap up on Jake Sheridan here, but uh, definitely not out of the woods yet. 
back marker traffic coming into play here as well in the short lap it kind of bunched them up together and then mackerel seems to find a little bit extra and stretch it out again a nice line there from both the lead riders as they stay up high on the bank to keep it smooth Glenn McCormack here now trying to find his way into second position and just look at how rough this track is so many lines to choose from coming around this left hander here before the step oh Jake Sheridan looking up the inside but couldn't no and Jake Sheridan's got the job done on James Mackerel up the uh, uphill step up at the middle of the circuit wow what a result here for Jake Sheridan as he makes his way back past James Mackerel Coming towards the end of the race now, wouldn't be surprised to see the last lap sag pretty soon. But it's Jake Sheridan now leading James Mackerel. And it's Jake Sheridan then who'll take the win in this last MX2 race today. James Mackerel falling quite a ways back in this last race, but you can see the delight on Sheridan there. Swinging his arm to finish out this third race. So a great ride from the young Dubliner. James Mackerel then uh, faded quite a ways back, but you have to wonder if he's thinking about that final MX1 race he has to do today. And again, struggling through the pain, going for a side again, a very sort of deflated looking James Mackerel here at this third one, but an absolutely valiant effort riding with such heart here today. Really is a struggle for him carrying that injury. And a long ways back then it'll be Glenn McCormick taking third position. I think, uh, I think Mackerel will take the overall for today. And uh, Jake Sheridan will keep his championship lead, but I'm sure Glenn McCormick would have maybe expected a little bit more of himself. A few errors in the riding today cost him the position, but here he is now coming to finish the line on that unique fit out Husqvarna. So that's it then for the third and final race of the MX2 Round 3 National Irish Championship here in Robinson's MX. Catching up here then with number five, Jack Galvin. Jack, you put in some really strong performances here today in Robinson's MX Park. Are you happy with your performance overall? Uh, yeah, not too bad, right? Because um, I've been sick all week and um, after lap three or four, I've no energy for the rest of the race. So I was just riding around until then, putting in a quick two or three laps and then just riding around and hope for the best. Yeah, well, you look comfortable on the sandy circle. Is this something you've practiced for before? Do you get much time in the sand being from down in Cork? No, none at all, really. <laughs> only when you're up to McGilligan, it's about the only bit and I've only been there once this year. Yeah, and, and how are you feeling about your championship overall so far? Whereabouts are you sitting these days? I think I'm fifth still there. David's ahead of me. In, David's in fourth, I'm fifth. Okay, very good. Well, uh, you've put in some strong performances today. Would you like to carry this momentum now into the next round in Derry Arkin? Yeah, definitely. With uh, getting good starts, it makes it so much easier. just seem to realise that now. <laughs> it's a lesson maybe you could have learned a couple of rounds earlier in the championship. Uh, but look, at, we wish you the very best of luck. And where would you like to finish up in the championship at the end of the season? Jeez, if I get a top five in here in my first year, it'd be all right. It'd be unbelievable. Great <laughs> stuff. Anyway, thanks very much for taking the time to talk to us. And we wish you the best of luck for the next round. Cheers. Thank you. And a big thanks to all those supporting Jack Galvin this 2019 season. We're catching up here with Glenn McCormack after the third race today. Glenn, maybe not the day you were looking for. A couple of up and down results and mistakes in between. How do you feel the day went for yourself? Uh, not too bad. Start off pretty, pretty good. Uh, first race, you know, it was comfortable enough. And then, um, you know, qualifying was all right. Track was really fast. Um, so yeah, I was happy enough going to the first race. First race was really good. You know, got into the lane, just sort of held a nice, comfortable gap. I um, was pretty happy with that. Uh, second race there, uh, had a crash at the start, but um, after that, I don't know, we had a bit of an issue with the, the front end, and you know, it was as if the front end was hanging out of it. So it's a bit sketchy the whole race, but no, it was not too bad to get back to second. Um, yeah, so it was all right. And then that last race, obviously, it was. Out for a bit of redemption after that, you know, got the bike sorted and um, you know, just made a mistake, took the front in the first lap and sort of took me off track, just in the fast bit of the track and, you know, when you're so far down, it's just so hard to make up that time, especially getting through the markers and stuff, by the time you get into third, it's, 
you know the gaps just so big so it was just too much and you know obviously not not the best of days we like more but you know safe and sound and you know we're good it's good practice for next weekend and next round of match match best championship so looking forward to it yeah, I think it's Black Souls coming up now. One thing I was very impressed by was your ability to do that big tabletop to single and the step down after all day long, no matter how rough the track got. What kind of commitment did it take to get over that thing? Uh, yeah, you're just hitting it very flat out. So you are, you're just, uh, you know, qualifying. I actually had thought about the tabletop and the single, but then I seen the, the big bikes do it, and then I was like, yeah, no problem. Just keep her lit. So, yeah, that's just sort of fun, you know. That's what, what you race for, jumping, you know, all the excitement of the racing. So, yeah, it's... Apart from all, it's fun, fun day, for taking everything else into consideration, you know, going home one piece and, you know, ready for next week. I've been having a bit of a row today with the marshals to say, and which is bigger, the mobile one jump in Desert Martin or that thing here in, uh, in Robinson's, what do you think? <laughs> there couldn't be too much in it, I think that, <laughs> that there takes more commitment than the mobile, than the mobile. Yeah. so it does, you know, so, uh, you know, size-wise I'm not too sure, different ways, but, um, yeah, that definitely takes a lot more commitment, so it does, you know, you're just, you're pretty pretty flat out on a 250 to get it so it's good all right well then thanks very much for talking to us and well done with your racing today no problem thank you very much and a big thanks to all those supporting glenn mccormick in this 2019 season for the results on the day then it was jake sheridan that took the overall win from uh, second place james mackerel and third place glenn mccormick with Jack Galvin in fourth and David Galvin sneaking in under the radar a little bit to take fifth over the overall, followed by Stephen Kelly, Matthew Lachlan, Dylan Steins, Aaron Gardner and Lee Coffey. Uh, the unofficial results then for the championship, it's Jake Sheridan continuing his lead but only by four points now over James Mackerel from David Galvin in third, Jack Galvin in fourth, Jordan Kyo in fifth, uh, dropping out and losing his position from I think it was second overall with his non-appearance at round three. Dylan Steins in 6th, Matthew Lachlan in 7th, Stephen Kelly in 8th, James Doyle in ninth, and Lee Coffey in 10th. So that's a wrap here then for the MX2 racing from Robinson's MX. We hope you enjoyed our coverage and we look forward to catching you for the next part to look at all the MX1 racing from Round 3 of the National Irish Championship.